Hi, I'm Chris James, and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today, we're going to be talking about how to fast without losing weight. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy, and you just become a better person. You need to start focusing more on the individual. Before we get started today, I just want to remind you all that the AHA fasting app is in development currently. So if you have not heard about that, make sure to check out our page that we developed to learn more about it. And also we are looking for contributors and we are giving out rewards. So check that out. Link is going to be in the description box below. What's going on, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about a topic that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I wanted to get a little bit more information and just have a more solid understanding of this before I started talking about it. Now, obviously, you all can see that I'm a slim guy. I've pretty much always been a slim guy. Even when I started my fasting journey, I was still on the smaller side, comparatively speaking, when you look at, you know, your average American. So losing weight was never like a big thing for me. And then, of course, it got to a point where I actually didn't want to lose any more weight. But when you start learning about fasting, you start learning about the benefits of fasting, you want to be able to fast without necessarily losing weight. Now, I know this isn't going to apply for everybody, but there are quite a few of us out there who are like, yeah, I want to fast, but I don't really want to lose a lot of weight. Or there's people out there who want to fast and they don't have that much weight to lose. So today we're going to kind of break that down a little bit. Okay, so fasting without losing weight is really pretty simple. It's kind of going to be uh, based on how you structure your fasts. It's also going to be based on how you structure your eating habits. These both are going to play a big role. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're not doing really long uh, fasts, right? Um, the shorter the fast, the less it's going to affect your weight. Or when you do fast, let's say if you're doing a two or three day fast at a time, if you give yourself a nice little refeed period before you do your next fast, that's also going to help keep your weight balanced. Now, if you're if you're dealing with some some more heavy diseases, you know, some more serious diseases, I will say that this process is going to be a little slower for you as far as like the reversal of these diseases. But that's only one type of person. Right. The other type of person might be looking for maintenance. Maybe they've gotten to their goal weight and they don't really want to lose too much more weight than what they're at now, or they just kind of want to maintain, because I can speak from personal experience, it gets kind of annoying uh, having to have two completely different sets of clothes, my fasting clothes and my non fasting clothes, which I utilize uh, throughout the year. So keep your fasts short. Okay, that's my first kind of step or key or whatever. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you give yourself um, not just a proper refeeding period, but also you want to be eating a certain way during this time. For maintenance fasting, some of you all might utilize something like a one meal a day strategy. OK, this is another way where you can kind of implement you, you can incorporate fasting into your daily lifestyle without losing a ton of weight. You are going to lose weight if you have weight to lose. But if you've gotten to the place where you don't really have any weight to, to lose and you're you're using a one meal a day strategy, meaning the body is at a comfortable weight, it will maintain. Now, you want to make sure that if your if your weight is a little bit more than what your body feels comfortable being, you're going to have to eat a little bit more on your one meal. So I would highly suggest making a very well-rounded meal. You want to have um, you know, your, your fruits and vegetables, you want to have a, something a little bit denser, some um, maybe like potato or other uh, um, tuber, um, or you could even use like a squash or something like that, something a little heavier. And then adding a grain to your meals will help a lot. So if you like quinoa, if you like, um, you know, wild rice, wild rice is a great one to add to your meal. And that way, if you're utilizing the one meal a day strategy, it will just help maintain your weight versus you losing weight. And of course, these are all healthy meals as well, right? You don't, a lot of people think they got to eat unhealthy to, to maintain weight or to gain weight or whatever the case may be. And that's not necessarily the case. 
Another way to help you with with uh, not losing as much weight or not losing any weight um, while you're fasting is utilizing different types of fasts like mono fasting or juice fasting. Okay, so if you if you utilize mono fasting, that's where you're going to eat one food item all day long. Now you're going to get the benefits of the increased digestion. You're going to get the benefits of the hydration. You're going to get the benefits of, uh, you know, like ex expelling mucus and things of that nature, but it's going to virtually slow or um, stop your weight loss. Now, once again, the main tenet is you can't do these things for, for long periods of time. You know, I want to be clear you're, you, you're probably going to lose a little weight while you do the fast, but then when you come off the fast, you'll regain it fairly quickly. And then the important thing to understand is that the weight that you lose is not the same weight that you gain. So you'll be able to maintain your weight, but it'll, it'll kind of be this, this rotating effect where you're rolling the bad stuff out and you're rolling the good stuff in. So that's kind of how it works. You can't really fast in any capacity and not lose any weight unless you have mastered breatharian, the breatharian technique, right? Where you, you essentially are learning to get your energy from um, the sun. That you're, you're, they, breatharians say they're getting their energy from um, their breath or whatever, but it's really, it's really solar energy and it's, it's through breath work. So by proper breathing technique, you can actually um, mitigate weight loss because you're getting nutrition from the sun. And keep in mind that even when you're eating, you know, food, that nutrition is a version of sunlight. When we, we've talked about many times that your, your plants and vegetables are condensed sunlight. That's all it is. Remember that we're energetic creatures. So the thing that's special about breatharians is they have learned how to, through their breath work, they have learned how to maximize the energy they can get directly from source, which is the sun, uh, which, you know, helps tremendously with weight loss. They're able to maintain their body mass without eating solid foods um, at all or as frequently as, you know, we, we traditionally would. Now, I'm, I don't talk about, uh, you know, breatharian technique because it's not something that I practice and it's not something that, yeah, I, I know enough about to speak intelligently about, but if you all are interested, you're more than welcome to learn more. Um, I, I certainly believe that if you incorporate some breathing techniques into your fast, not only is it going to help with your overall detox process, digestion, et cetera, but if you're doing this properly, you're outside, you're grounded to the, you're grounded to the earth and you're getting sunlight, then you can once again help keep your weight balanced. Now, one main caveat for all of this is if you are morbidly obese or if you are uh, like greatly overweight, this none of this is going to work for maintaining. I don't know why anybody would want to maintain in those situations, but you're not going to be able to. And and I would also say that part of understanding that that statement I just made is also understanding what is overweight really mean? What is morbidly obese really mean? Because uh, depending on where you are in the world, there's different standards for what that means. Uh, but it's really, it's really, what is what is overweight is really a personal thing. It's not something that can necessarily be judged by like an average of the populace. So what I usually like to suggest to do is to change your dietary habits to, you know, the, the optimal diet. Um, people have different beliefs for what that is. I believe that it's a um, high water content diet, right? Where you're eating high water content foods. Switch to that. Start eating that way for, you know, three, six, a year or whatever, three, six months, a year. See where your body settles. Once your body has settled, okay, um, it's going to feel comfortable. You're going to feel good. Your body's going to feel good. Then that's going to help you determine where your natural size is. If you're still eating processed foods or inflammatory foods, if you're still eating mucus forming foods, uh, if you're still eating foods that we know we talk about on this channel that aren't good for you, it's going to kind of cause your weight to not necessarily settle uh, because those foods disrupt the natural process. So that's going to help you with this whole thing. 
Um, I know that maybe some of you all are just like, well, you know, I'm, I'm 180 pounds. That's exactly where I want to be. And I understand that. I, that may not be where your body wants to be. So just keep that in mind, because if that's, if that's over your normal weight, whatever your natural weight is, it's going to change your results. So for me, my body likes to sit at around 180, 85 pounds. That's where my body likes to sit. It's much smaller than what society probably would say, Chris, you need to be, or what maybe even I would have said I need to be at. With that being said, it's very easy for me to maintain using some of these techniques, this weight. Now I can easily go lower and I have gone lower, right? Um, but that's kind of where my body naturally likes to sit when I'm eating alkaline and I'm you know, not eating Jimmy John's and I'm not kind of throwing off my game. That's where my body likes to be locked in at. Now you can alter the, your, your build, your physique with exercise and, and things of that nature. So you could kind of shape the way you look, but that's, that's where my body likes to sit as far as weight goes. Make sure that you just do like short fast or alternating day is also a good way to utilize fasting without losing a ton of weight, right? You're just going to eat one day and then fast one day. You eat one day, you fast one day. Once again, eat well. Eat well on the days that you eat, but by by doing this eating and then, you know, you want to have you want to have a uh, nice side, nice portion sizes so you don't have to eat like six times a day. You can still only eat once or twice a day, but then you need to make sure that your plate is kind of well rounded. Like, like I said, natural grains, fruits and vegetables, um, and then you know have some denser stuff on your plate, and that'll help keep that'll help keep the weight maintained. Once again, this message is probably mostly for those who are on the more slender side, right? I know some of I know some of you are watching. Like I don't understand why this is significant. If it's probably not for you. But there's many people who watch the channel who have, you know, they're dealing with fibroids, um, they're dealing with uh, brain fog, they're dealing with low energy, they're dealing with skin issues, and they're small, right? They might be dealing with extreme constipation, and they're slender people. There are certainly many diseases that you can have as being a skinny person, uh, right? People like to think, oh, you're skinny, you're healthy. No, that's not true, right? We talked about this maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, in the video I did, you can be skinny and get cancer. You could be skinny and get diabetes. So the point of this is I'm already skinny. I'm, I'm pre-diabetic or I'm diabetic. I want to reverse the disease, but I don't want to look like, you know, a skeleton. These are some of the techniques you all can use to help maintain your weight while still uh, dealing with these diseases. Supplement with some exercise if you really want to make sure to maintain that physique, because once the inflammation starts going down, your weight might be the same, but your but your physique is going to change. These are two different things. So you may need to supplement with some exercise, which may not be something you've ever had to do before. Maybe you just your body just be what it is, because a lot of inflammation will help fill out your frame and make you look a certain kind of way. So if you want that look, you might need to hit the gym. All right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it reached those who it needed to reach. And maybe for those of you who are on the bigger side and you're losing weight, this is something that you'll be looking to do when you get to the other end of the spectrum and you don't just want to be so small, right? This is what I had to learn. This is how I've been able to kind of maintain my weight. And so uh, hopefully that'll be something you all can refer back to when you get to that point. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you all next time.